what is the yardstick to measure an accepted du'a? In other words, what do I do to ensure my du'a is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We make du'a now and then. Especially in this holy month of Ramadan. Du'a iftitah. Jawshan al-Kabir we're going to be reciting very soon. Abu Hamza al-Thumali. No, sometimes you have your own hajat and you've been asking Allah and yet there is no result. What dua is accepted by Allah? And what dua is rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let me just give you a few tips and we're done. There is one way to measure a dua which is accepted by Allah. What is that way? That is when the dua is for Allah. Pay attention to this kindly. When the dua is for Allah, then that dua would be accepted by Allah. How? You see the ayah, Quran 2, verse 186. Said, فَلْيَسْتَجِبُوا let them supplicate to me. Let them ask me. In other words, if your dua is for Allah, there is no way that Allah will not accept your dua. You know why? Because Allah promised in Quran, Udu'uni astajiblakum. Call on me. And I will respond, this is Allah's promise. Will Allah fail to deliver on his promise? No. But why is it that you make dua? You're looking for job. Sometimes you're making dua to get married. Sometimes you're making dua to get promotion. Sometimes you're making dua to establish a business. But you're not getting it. And Allah promised in Quran, Ud'uni astajib lakum. Where is the problem? Is the problem now the love from God? Or the problem is from you? No doubt the problem is from us and not from God. The giver gives every single moment. But the receiver doesn't know how to receive. If we know how to receive, then giver is always giving. As Amir al mumin mentioned, I will not supplicate to Lord that I do not know. They came to Imam Jafar alayhi salam and they said to Imam alayhi salam, we making dua, fala yustajabu lana, nadu fala yustajabu lana. Imam alayhi salam, we praying, making dua, crying to Allah, but our duas are not answered. What was the response of Imam Jafar alayhi salam? تدعون لأنكم تدعون من لا تعرفونه because you are calling on the one you do not know one if you truly want your dua to be accepted number one when you sit during dua give maximum attention to the dua if you like unconditional attention to the dua. Not when dua is being recited, you turn this way, you turn that way, you walk out, you come in, making noise, law. If you truly want your dua to be accepted, that's the promise of Allah. He promised. Allah's promise not like my promise or your promise. First thing to do during dua, sit, pay unconditional attention to the dua. And today especially, we have PowerPoint presentations when dua is being recited. Pay attention and relate to the dua. Understand what is being recited. And reflect upon what is being recited. When at the line of a dua, it has been recited that we ask forgiveness of Allah. Remember your sins. 
and pledge Allah that I will never indulge in a son. Engage with the dua. That's one. Two. If you truly want your dua to be accepted, brothers and sisters, because you don't want to waste our time making dua, spending times, spending hours, and those dua are not being accepted. Facing towards the direction of Kibla. It's a condition for the acceptance of our dua. When dua is being recited, it is highly recommended you face Kibla. You see, when you go for an interview, work interview, you pay attention. This is like coming to Allah's interview. Because we are told, whoever wants to talk to Allah, he should make dua. But whoever wants Allah to talk to him, he should recite Quran. So during dua, Kibla is so important. Three, if you truly want your dua to be accepted, raise up your hands. Rasulullah mentioned, Allah is shy. Allah is shy. Not to answer the dua of the one who raised up his hands before he put the hands down. So when dua is be recited, yes, sometimes you may get tired, that's fine. Raise up your hands. That shows humbleness. That shows humility. That shows sense of agency. That shows that you are determined. That shows that you are really seeking Allah. That shows that you are demonstrating that Allah truly and absolutely on you. And the other conditions of dua. Timings of our dua. Remember, dua is a rakikatul ibadah. It's the beauty of our worship. It's the beauty of the worships of the holy month of Ramadan. Timing is crucial. What better time than the holy month of Ramadan? And what better time than the nights of Qadr? There are certain specific times that when you make dua quickly, Allah answer. Best of them, the night of Ramadan and the days of Ramadan. So when we come for amal, understand these timings are precious. You cannot afford to waste every moment of this night of Qadr. Especially we those in the United Kingdom and other places where the period between iftar and suhoor is too short. You can't afford to waste a moment of that. Because these are the moments that you cannot replace them anymore in your life. And last but not least, if you truly want your dua to be accepted, try to make sure that there is no hukuku nas on your shoulder. People's right, hukuku nas. When you ask Allah, make sure somebody's right is not with you. And if that person's right is with you, negotiate with that person. In fact, one tradition of the Prophet said, on the night of Qadr, there are two people their du'as will not go up. It will remain hanging. Two groups of people. You will make du'a. Subhanaka ya la ilaha illa ant. Allahumma inni aftati ghuthana abihamdi. Zalam tu nafsi. Watajarra' tu bijahli. He said, their du'a will remain. Number one, somebody who eats the right of people as I mentioned. You've eaten somebody's money. You've eaten somebody's wealth. You gossiped about someone he didn't know or he doesn't know. You undermine someone he doesn't know she doesn't know. You backbite someone who doesn't know. You have to go back to that person if you truly want Allah to accept your dua. Alas, uqukul walidain. Obedience, disobedience to parents. You've been disrespectful to your parents. 
before you sit for dua ask them for forgiveness wallahi alazim you've undermined your parents you've talked to your parents anyhow your parents are offended by your comments or by your attitudes or by your behavior the holy prophet is saying go back ask for forgiveness before you come and ask allah on the night of qadr and lastly when you sit for the dua do it as if it is a farewell dua of your life as if there will be no any other ramadan in your life It is an opportunity. Don't let it slip and skip you.